Well, I just did a series on uh, the continuum hypothesis and I ruffled feathers. I sure ruffled feathers. I did a series on Richard Dawkins. I definitely ruffled feathers. Um, I did a series on the handsomest man in the world discussing set theory and I didn't ruffle any feathers. The, the whole point of that was to ruffle feathers. Oh, well, I guess I better hit the advice websites. Uh, but anyways, we're going to do a uh, video on uh, the philosophical meaning of incompleteness, and we're going to bring in the liar's paradox a little bit, and I'm going to compare and contrast uh, Gödel's incompleteness and the liar's paradox. And hopefully I won't ruffle feathers uh, too much. Okay, now what is uh, Gödel's incompleteness? We are going to assume, to understand Gödel's incompleteness, um, the existence of some kind of an algorithm that can generate all philosophical or mathematical truth based on a set of fixed axioms. Okay, um, and this we'll call this the universal truth machine. Uh, I'm not going to get into the question of Penrose and artificial intelligence in this. Let's just assume that it's a universal truth machine and that it's not artificial intelligence. It's a machine. Okay. And the machine can ascertain the truth and falsehood of a given mathematical statement or the truth and falsehood of a given philosophical statement based on, um, based on a set of axioms. Okay. Finite axioms. Okay. Now, um, and it'd be a kind of a good question as to whether the state, the computer could know all arithmetic truth based on a few axioms. That's kind of an interesting question there. Um, uh, we, but it's, anyways, let's, let's just go over the basics of uh, Gödel's proof. And I'm not going to get into the mathematical part, just the philosophical part. So if you want to get into the math part, you're going to have to go to some other video and study recursions and, and the like. Okay, well, um, a wise guy walks up to the universal truth machine, and um, uh, all, all mathematical knowledge, all philosophical knowledge. No, by the way, this machine is not supposed to be God or the absolute, okay, because uh, this machine is limited to a set of finite axioms. This is a machine that uh, we could construct, okay, so that's important. We're not getting into religious questions. This is, again, a, a, not an artificial intelligence not a transcendent being. This is simply a, a, a truth machine. Okay. And the wise guy says to the truth machine, tell me the answer to this statement G. G shall be defined as UTM will never say G is true. Okay. Now that is what G equals. G equals UTM will never say G is true. Now notice I spoke of recursions. Uh, so, okay. Well, Obviously, there's a paradox here, because if we say G is true, then we are affirming the truth of UTM will never say G is true. So the computer can't say that G is true. In fact, the statement is true, because the computer can say, can say nothing, thereby affirming UTM will never say G is true. But see, the computer is supposed to be able to answer all questions. Okay, and the computer is, is made silent. Uh, so we know from our standpoint that the statement is true. Okay, this is a little different than the liar's paradox, which I'm going to get to in a minute. We know from our standpoint that UTM will never say G is true, uh, but the problem is the computer can never can never say that, and arguably it would be difficult for a computer to have that intuition to to say that UTM will never say that G is true. Okay, but the bottom line is it is a true statement, but once the computer says true, then it invalidates the statement. Now, but then if the computer says false, it validates the statement, but then the computer just said false. So the computer is supposed to be able to uh, give a truth or falsehood to any particular statement, uh, but this statement becomes paradoxical. Now, Gödel was also able to um, take it a step further by... by Oh, and, and, and to be very clear, uh, this, this incompleteness argument affirms the idea that there are truths then that are intuitive, that there are truths that cannot be generated from a set of finite axioms X, okay? Because we've just introduced a novelty into the system where a set of finite axioms X won't apply, okay? Now, how, how meaningful is this uh, mathematically in any kind of, let's say, a rigorous... Uh, 
proof. I mean, how, how meaningful is this actually? Well, Gödel was actually able to take it a step further and set this up so that it was mathematically meaningful. Okay, now that's very important to understand. It's not simply sophistry. This, is, this was mathematically meaningful where um, you have a given formal system and you now have uh, that formal system. You can convert the letters, the actual letters of the statement into mathematical statements that are true and that parallel the philosophical argument. Okay, so this, this proof has a hard edge to it where it's not simply sophistry. But I think that from the standpoint of philosophers, they might say, well, wait a second, wait a second. Is this a meaningful statement? Okay, can this not be compared to the liar's paradox where the liar's paradox is this statement is false? Okay, well, obviously there you have something that's, that, that is not so much recursive as circular. You know, this statement is false. Well... Is that statement true? Well, if it's true, then the statement's false. Backwards and forwards. What I would say, though, and I think that um, philosophers have made this point, that that statement's not so much paradoxical as meaningless. That all statements in logical, all statements in philosophy should be viewed as truth claims. And if a statement invalidates itself as a truth claim, then it becomes meaningless. In other words, if I were to say... Uh, all raspberries are blue. Well, that's a false claim. But it is a truth claim nonetheless, because the statement, it is true that all raspberries are uh, blue, is just the same as saying, it, it, it's, it's, it's just affirming that all raspberries are blue is a truth claim, even though the statement is false. Uh, Whereas this statement is false is saying the same as this statement is not a truth claim. And so you don't consider it as a truth claim. It's a way out of the liar's paradox that I think has a lot of validity to it. But you can't actually say that with UTM will never say G is true. You, you, you can't get out of it that way because you're not saying that G is true or false. Um, in fact, it is true that uh, UTM will never say that G is true because the computer will be stopped. Uh, the computer, again, is supposed to be able to determine all truth on the basis of a formal system. And what you've now introduced is something that, that cannot be answerable based on a formal system. Okay. So it is philosophically meaningful. I mean, you can, you can um, debate what that formal system X is and whether X really, it, whether the statement G really is uh, actually, I think they would, instead of X, they would use the term U, but U would imply an infinite number of axioms from my standpoint. So let's just say a subset of that, a, a, a set of X axioms, you could debate what those axioms are. And you could perhaps argue that, that since we don't know what X is, um, we can't know whether uh, G is complete with respect to X or not. But actually, Gödel was able to establish a mathematical argument, not just a philosophical argument. And that makes his proof that much more compelling. Now, what if, if we accept his truth is valid, and I would personally, what does that mean? Does that mean that all science is incomplete or all philosophy is incomplete or all art or all religion? I don't think it means that. But what I think it means is that to accept these things as complete, you have to validate intuition. Okay, in other words, for... To accept that maybe the computer does know that G is uh, true but can't say it. Um, in other words, that there's some degree of uh, fuzzy thinking on the part of the computer, or let's say multivariant thinking on the part of the computer, would be to suggest that the computer has intuition. And thus, in a sense, you would be saying that the computer would be able to do what the human mind can do, and that is go on a certain generate axioms as it goes along or sort or in, in, in essence to be flexible as it goes along. Now I'm promise you I wouldn't get into the question of AI today, but that would be to go beyond the boundaries of X axioms and to accept that there might be axioms out there in the universe that, that don't fit into uh, set X and that would be to validate incompleteness. So incompleteness doesn't mean that it's incomplete absolutely forever. It just means to validate intuition. And I think that there um, we have visas that open up in philosophy that might go well beyond anything we've discovered thus far. Thank you.